Today we're going to be looking at the Zeeman effect experiment. Now the Zeeman effect is a quantum effect where the spectral lines of a gas discharge lamp are split into magnetic sublevels by an external magnetic field. Unfortunately, these magnetic sublevels are incredibly close to each other in terms of energy and therefore also in terms of wavelength. So in order to discern them, we need a very, very high resolution spectrometer, which is what the setup you see here is used for. To start off with, we have a cadmium discharge lamp. So if we turn that on, we see this pleasant blue-white color. This color is made up of several different wavelengths, and we only care to isolate a single red wavelength. So even though it's blue here, when we move down through the optical system, our final element is actually a long pass filter to isolate just the red line which we are interested in. Surrounding the lamp is an electromagnet. It's a Helmholtz arrangement with an iron core in order to create a reasonably uniform tunable field around the lamp's position. We tune the field by adjusting the current flowing through the coils. Further, there is a hole which has been bored directly through the iron core in order for us to pass the light through it in both a parallel and a perpendicular field arrangement facilitated by this rotating stage. So here you can see we've got the magnetic field oriented in this direction and the optical axis is perpendicular to it. And then in this orientation, you'll see we've got the magnetic field oriented along the optical axis, i.e. parallel to it. Moving along the optical path, we have an iris to block out any extraneous light, and then a 50 millimeter focal length lens in order to focus the light into the next element, Fabry-Perot interferometer. The Fabry-Perot interferometer is the core of this experiment. It's how we're able to discern between the very small shifts in wavelength due to the Zeeman splitting. It's essentially just two semi-transparent mirrors oriented parallel to each other. As the light passes through this etalon, you get resonance effects which form an interference pattern which take the shape of concentric rings. The image coming from the Fabry-Pro interferometer is then passed through an image forming lens which projects the image of rings through the filter onto our camera. Here we can see the view looking through the interferometer with the naked eye of the concentric red rings. Here we will look at the data gathered by the camera. First of all, we have the magnetic field oriented parallel to the optical axis. And we can see that as we begin to increase the field strength, we see the individual ring orders begin to split, in this case into a pair of ring orders. Often these are referred to as ring components. Now, changing the orientation of the magnet, we have it in the perpendicular orientation to the optical axis. And again, as we begin to increase the field, we see the ring orders beginning to split into magnetic sublevels. This time, however, there are three ring components.